Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. So our conversation we're shining a spotlight on today is the adoption of digital terrestrial television, also known as DTT in Trinidad and Tobago. Joining us is Curly Prescott, Executive Officer of Technology and Engineering, along with Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, fondly known as TACT. Good morning, Curly, and welcome. Good morning, Natasha. Good morning to your viewers. It's a pleasure to have you with us on the show this morning. Absolutely. And before we get into what DTT is, because I know we have a lot of questions, can we just get a brief overview of TAT and what TAT's main objectives are? Sure, sure. Um, so, so thank you again for having us this morning. The Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago is the regulator for the telecommunications and broadcasting sectors in Trinidad and Tobago. When we speak about telecommunications, most persons are familiar with TSTT, Digicel, Flo, um, most recently Starlink would have entered Trinidad and Tobago. We are responsible for you know, authorizing those providers and providing them with the telecommunication resources that they need to provide services such as access to spectrum, radio spectrum, um, telephone numbers, and, and so on and so forth. So that's on the telecommunication side. And on the broadcasting side, persons would be familiar with television stations such as TTT yeah. and radio stations. So we would be responsible for authorizing them, is assigning them the frequencies that they broadcast over the air, and um, you know, facilitating their operations, handling things like interference complaints. Mm. We also do take consumer complaints from the public. So if it is you have a, um, a grievance with your telecommunication service provider or your broadcasting service, and you've reported it to your provider without any relief, right. it can be escalated to us and we can engage the, the providers on your behalf. Okay, excellent. So let's now get into this DTT. Digital over terrestrial. What exactly is it? All right, so what we in Trinidad and Tobago are familiar with would be terrestrial television or over-the-air television. And over-the-air television is the ability to be able to pick up um, television content over the air without having a subscription right. from a cable television provider or, or an internet service provider. So, and, and I mean, over-the-air television has been available in Trinidad and Tobago for, for decades, yeah. essentially. And that's where, you know, television would have born with free-to-air television. Um, so long before cable TV was as prevalent as it is today, over-the-air television was available and was the primary source of, of television content. I mean, actually, I grew up on, on over-the-air mm -hmm. television, you know, watching Indian movies and Syria football on Sundays, yes. right? Um, so the, 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 the television content, the, the television, the current television infrastructure is analog. It's, 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 it's obsolete. And... Um, and as you said, the over-the-air over -the television um, platforms are analog. Um, what persons would be familiar with would be the channel numbers. So in case of TTT, um, the current channels that, that TTT broadcast on are channels 9, channels 13, and channels 20. So you'd have to switch your television set to those frequency numbers in order to pick up those television signals over the air. And what digital terrestrial television is about is the upgrade or the evolution of over-the-air television to a, a more sophisticated, higher quality um, you know, advanced featured product. So that at home right now with, with, with over-the-air television, with, mm -hmm. with the current analog format, you know, you, you, you watch content, but you're unable to see like a schedule of programming that persons with cable television are familiar with. So with the evolution of digital terrestrial television, you get an uh, improvement in quality. Mm -hmm. So you move from standard de um, definition format to high definition format. You can get high definition format and even move in towards 4K resolution over the air. You can get advanced features that persons have grown accustomed to on the cable side, such as you know having the presence of an electronic programming guide, um, better audio, surround sound, audio, those, those sort of things are now available using digital terrestrial television. This is fantastic. So of course, viewers, you'll see on your screen there some of the points which were just shared by Curly this morning. Mm -hmm. Now, you've also shared with us the why as to mm -hmm. why this is being done. Those benefits are absolutely incredible. But my question is why now? Okay, sure, sure, sure. So, um, as we all know, the landscape, the media landscape is evolving, mm -hmm. right? So we have a lot of um, adoption by consumers of social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, Google, these sort of things. Um, so as the landscape evolves, consumer habits and consumer expectations have also evolved, right? So again, when you get at home and persons turn on their streaming box and they turn on Netflix, the quality of movies that you see are in high definition, 4K quality. So, so consumers' expectations and needs have evolved to a, a better standard. 
So what the move to digital terrestrial television is about mm -hmm. is sort of evolving with what's happening across the industry. The industry okay. doesn't exist by itself. Mm -hmm. So in order to be able to remain relevant and remain, remain pertinent to the new consumer, the consumer who grows up watching Netflix quality content yeah. and using social media to get their advertising, you know, the product of itself, the over-the-air television product itself has to evolve to remain relevant, to remain competitive, and to be able to continue to provide the features that consumers will grow accustomed to um, being able to drive their smart vehicles and, and all these sort of good things, yeah. oh, you know, in the future. So this is really about the evolution of the over-the-air broadcasting sector that digital means to keep up with the demands and the and the and the, and the uh, expectations of the of the of the of, of, of the consumer of tomorrow. I mean, it definitely will. You've, you've piqued my interest, and I'm sure that you've piqued many people's interest this morning mm -hmm. who are watching the show because, as you mentioned earlier, you grew up on that. TV from before. Yes. You know, you would switch. I mean, when you said nine, I thought to myself, wow, I remember when TTT was channel two. That's right. Yes. That's right. Uh, two so, and 13. Yes, yeah, yes, two yes, and 13. Yes, 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 so yes, this yes, definitely yes. is a great push forward for the future. Mm -hmm. Who is this going to impact? And what about people who are considering That's switching? Right. That's right. Right, right. So this primarily impacts persons who consume free to air television mm -hmm. TV. And based upon a, a digital inclusion survey that the Telecom Authority would have conducted back in 2021, so we call it our DIS 2021 Digital Inclusion Survey, the feedback we got from that survey is that there's still 25% of our population still consuming free tier television. Yeah, so while the vast majority thinks everybody's watching cable, everybody's streaming on the internet, there's still a significant portion of our population. You know, we estimate over 100,000 homes. Wow. Yeah, or over 400,000 people in our population still consume television, you know, over the air, for using free-to-air means. Um, so primarily, those homes, those people who still consume free-to-air over the air, this is going to impact them. Mm -hmm. Because now, once the, 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 the signal that they receive over the air moves to digital, they need to have a means by which they could continue to access that digital content. Yeah. The, the, TVs as is, the TVs as they are today would not be able to, to receive the digital signal. However, once it, the, the, the television um, platform moves from the current analog means to digital, it actually provides an opportunity for folks who currently don't consume television free tier today. You mm -hmm. know, so you know because again, as speaking to, as I as I spoke, people's expectations have evolved to, to being able to see high definition content and that sort of stuff. Um, now, those who currently have a subscription service, mm -hmm. you know, they can think about, hey, you know, maybe I can just revert to watching free to air because the quality is going to be high definition mm -hmm. and the programming choices you know hopefully will expand to where they can accept the majority of their their their, their viewing content free to air rather than having to have to pay subscription so you have those who consume it today yeah. and then those who currently pay a subscription they now will have a choice to to, to revert to free to air television once the, the platform has improved and advanced. And it's fantastic that that choice is going to become available. But before we get into the when, mm -hmm. how are we going to be able to access That's DTT? Right. Excellent question. So, as I mentioned, those who view it today, they would have to equip their current equipment in order to do so. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's, there's two channels. There's, well, actually, there are three, three main paths to, to being able to receive digital, ter um, the digital television signal, DTT signals. Um, one path would be if you have an existing television, it's working perfectly, no issues with it, you just bought it three years ago and it's showing wonderfully, um, you can buy what is referred to as a, a, an accessory or a set-top box, a digital, okay. you know, a compatible accessory. Um, the particular technology we're deploying in Trinidad for DTT is called ATSC 3.0, right? Mm -hmm. So once you get a, a, an accessory that supports the ATSC 3.0 standard, you can connect that to your antenna so you, your, you as a consumer can reuse your existing over the antenna connect it to your um, DTT accessory mm -hmm. and connect that accessory using HDMI to your current TV today. Mm. And you will now gain access to the um, advanced, higher quality content and the programming guides and all the features that DTT presents. Mm -hmm. If, for example, your current TV is pretty old, you had it for eight, nine years now, the lines are starting to come across the screen, the audio has failed, and you're looking for a replacement to upgrade, now is the perfect time to buy an ATSC 3.0 capable television mm -hmm. and they are available in the market today uh, we know of at least two vendors that have the, 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 the products available price smart and and circuit zone mm -hmm. they have televisions from hisense and samsung that support the standard so mm -hmm. if it is you're looking to change your television set or mm -hmm. for example you may be home your current television is working fine but you, you're looking for something different right 
you know, when you're making that purchasing decision, you know, it'll be suitable to purchase a television that supports the DTT standard mm -hmm. so that you can, once you connect your antenna to that television, be able to receive the, 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 the um, DTT signals. And the last part you have, because this is the, the next wave of technology, this ATIC 3.0 DTT signals are available on the devices that, that persons um, use today, tablets, mm -hmm. cell phones, laptops, that sort of stuff. So once you get an appropriate USB dongle, you can get a USB dongle, attach it to a suitable indoor antenna, mm -hmm. and you would be able to view the, the digital over-the-air content on devices like tablets, laptops, and cell phones once you have a suitable um, USB receiver. Okay, and with this content, I know it's free to air, but who is in, who's going to be in charge of the content? So the broadcasters. So your current okay. broadcasters that broadcast today, they're going to continue to be the broadcasters. So TTT is still going to be um, prominent <laughs> in the broadcast, you know, um, of its content, its programs, the morning, you know, you know the, um, the, the, the now morning show will continue to be broadcast in better quality. Ah. So for those who watch it on free to air now, they'll be seeing it in standard definition. When you move to DTTs, it's going to be, you know, 1080p type quality, high, high resolution, um, better audio, that sort of stuff. So it's going to be the remain existing broadcasters, free tier broadcasters that remain today. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen, one of the challenges, actually, because of the legacy platform, the obsolete mm -hmm. platforms, where you need your own frequency to broadcast, you know. So um, TTT has another channel that is shown cable, which is the Channel 4, mm -hmm. um, Government Information yes. Service Channel. And they're being unable to restore it on air because of the challenges associated with the legacy technology. With DTT, DTT will have the capacity, once they've, their signal is available, to add that GIS channel signal over the air as well. Okay. So GIS can be restored over the air, free to air, to consumers. And with that ability to carry multiple channels on a single frequency, right, it reduces the cost for broadcasters to broadcast, help, help, helping them to remain sustainable. But it also means that more content can come on here. So the yeah. value of watching content over the air is going to be enhanced because now you're going to have access to more channels, more television channels, and even possibly radio stations over mm. the air as well. So rather than having to have a separate radio, you can listen to audio channels via television. Okay, this is absolutely excellent. But when can we see this happen? All right, excellent question, Natasha. So the time frame we have as the authority we're working with is for a digital switch on in 2025. So we're looking at the latter half of 2025 for the digital signal to go on air. Um, we're excited about that time frame because it means that, you know, hopefully when the, um, the elections kick into high gear and they start having the political rallies and so on, you know, the political rallies can be broadcast over the end, high definition, mm -hmm. qual you know, quality and, and, um, and, and, and excellent um, audio quality as well. We're also looking forward to World Cup 2026. Yes, we are. So again, <laughs> Um, you, you don't know, you no longer have to get a subscription in order to see your favorite football right. teams play mm -hmm. in high definition quality. That will be available over the air, free to air, via the DTT um, platform. Um, so we're hoping to switch on in the latter half of 2025, and then we'll start a gradual switch off of the analog channels, which we hope to be switched off by, say, the end of 2026, early 2027. So that's the sort of the time, plan, the time frames we're working with. From Excellent. Availability. Yeah. Excellent. So definitely a work in process, but mm -hmm. the future of television. Yes, that's right. And that's thank right. you so much for joining us, Curly. It's been an excellent conversation. Thank you, Natasha, for having us. Our pleasure. Curly Prescott, Executive Officer from TAT, this morning talking about that transformation or transition to DTT. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss the next conversation happening right after this break. Lauren said, go out in New York City.